Hello! In this video I would like to demonstrate you integration of Synfix Studio with Papagayo LipSync software. This feature is implemented by our higher ed developer Ivan Mahonin. The Papagayo application allows to easily create mouth animation for your character by synchronizing text with an audio file. And now it is possible to use animation data from Papagayo in Synfig directly. Here I have a character and several mouth shapes prepared for different kinds of sounds. This one, this one, and finally a closet one. Now let's import Papagayo file. Here you can see two layers created. First one is a sound layer and second is a specially configured switch group. Let's take a look at its contents. Here you can see a set of automatically created groups representing the phonemes from Papagayo file. At the moment we don't see any changes at the work area because those groups are empty. But we can easily fill them with our prepared mouth shapes. First, let's drag this switch group into character group and move it down. Now let's drag our mouth shapes to corresponding phonemas. This one is obviously a rest phoneme. And this one seems to be E. This goes for E at a C. FV. MVP. This one I will use twice for O and U phonemes. So let's duplicate it. And drag. And finally goes A phoneme. Let's take a look at the preview. You can see we have mouth animation now. Well, but I don't really like when the mouth is moving so fast. I think it would be better to decrease FPS for mouth animation. To achieve this I will use a stroboscope layer. Let's set frequency to 12 frames per second. Well, this is much better now. Oh, but it's possible you don't see any difference because I'm recording this screencast at 15 FPS. Well, but anyway, believe me, uh, with 12 FPS it looks much better. Let me note that the animation data from the Papagayo is not uh, really transferred into a synfig file. Instead, the Papagayo file is referenced and animation data is linked. This is why phoneme changes are indicated by green lines instead of regular waypoints. So, it is not possible to directly edit positions of phoneme case in Synfig. But, if we will edit original Papagayo file, 
The animation data will be updated in Synfig automatically. And uh, I have a good news for you. If you have Papagayo PGO files associated with Papagayo in your system, then you can open linked file directly from Synfig. Just right-click on switch layer and choose to open linked file. Here we have Papagayo window open it and the file is loaded. Let's make some changes. Like this. And if we click Save button, then the animation data will be updated in Synfig immediately. Just look at the time track here. See? The green time marks are updated when I have clicked the Save button. Now let's close Papagayo. Well, as you can see, our changes completely messed up the animation. It's out of sync now. So let's revert our changes. So this is how the integration of Papagayo and Synfig works right now. In the second part of my tutorial, I would like to tell about internal details of how this integration implemented. To make this feature work, our hired developer Ivan Mahonin made several improvements to the functionality of the switch group. As you probably know, the switch group is acting like an ordinary group, but it shows only one of its child layers. The active layer name parameter indicates the name of the layer to display. Usually we are animating this parameter using waypoints to change visibility of layers at particular moments of time. But for Papagayo integration, Ivan implemented a special converter, which takes animation data from an external file. The converter is called animated file. At this moment only Papagayo file format is supported. Of course, it is possible to add more formats in the future if we will need them. And this converter is attached by default to the switch group when we are importing a uh, Papagaya file. Another improvement is about representation of layers in the switch group. You probably noticed it, that the name of the active layer is indicated with the bold text. This is not a new feature, but in previous versions of Synfig it didn't work it correctly. The layer tree wasn't updated when we were scrubbing the timeline. Now this bug is fixed. But that's not all. To illustrate the next improvement, I am going to remove this layer from the switch group. See? When I have removed the layer, an empty group appeared instead of deleted one. Such placeholders we call ghost groups. The ghost group was created automatically because this name appearing in the animation of the active layer parameter. So ghost groups indicate which layers are missing from the set of possible values for switch group. And finally, let's see what happens if I will add an extra layer to the switch group. Let's create a new group and call it extra. Now I am dragging it inside of the switch group. The name extra never appears in the set of possible values for this switch group. This is why the name of the layer is indicated with underlined text. 
So, as you can see, with the new behavior of switch groups, we can easily see which layers are active, which layers are missing from the animation set, and finally, which layers are redundant and never used in animation set of the switch group. At the end of this tutorial, I would like to say thank you to everyone who supported Synfig development by purchasing our testing builds and Synfig training package. And my special thanks to everyone who provided their donations on a regular basis. Your support made development of this feature possible. Thank you.